Hello, in this video I am going to demonstrate for you how to capture an operating system image using SysPrep and ImageX. In this virtual demonstration our environment consists of a 2008 server running virtually inside a VMware player as well as a Windows 7 operating system that is also running virtually inside of VMware Player. Now to start the imaging process we really need to run SysPrep. SysPrep is going to take all of the unique information that exists on this Windows 7 computer and strip that information so when we create new images in the future it will ask us for unique information for things like such as a computer name so we don't have duplicate computer names. So to do this, I need to get to a command prompt. So I'm going to click on Start, and I'm going to search for CMD. Hit Enter, and I have a command prompt. I want to change directories into the Windows System32 SysPrep folder. And inside of the SysPrep folder, I want to type SysPrep forward slash generalize which is going to strip all the unique information I'm also going to input slash OOBE which would pre-activate Windows 7 if I were a system builder let's review I'm gonna run sysprep using slash generalize to take away all unique information as well as slash OOBE which some system builders want to do to pre-activate Windows for their customers. So I'm going to hit the Enter key and SysPrep is doing its thing and then it's going to turn off our operating system. So I'll come back to you when the operating system is turned off. In the interim, we'll just fast forward. All right. Our Windows 7 client operating system has been shut down. SysPrep is finalizing its details. So the next step in capturing an image is to use ImageX. And the best way to use ImageX is to boot your computer using a Windows PE boot disk that also has ImageX present. So we need to get into our VMware player settings and identify where the WinPE boot disk is. If you have a disk, great. Put it in your DVD drive and turn your computer on and as long as your BIOS is set to boot from CD, you will boot into a Windows PE environment. I'm using VMware Player which is going to make things a little more challenging but it's still very possible to boot our computer using a Windows PE boot disk. You'll see right here I've got WinPE.ISO on my desktop. It's ready to be used electronically. So I'm going to go to BK-CL1 in a VMware environment and I want to edit virtual machine settings. I need to go to the CD DVD drive and use an ISO image file to boot the computer with. So I need to browse and I'm going to browse to my desktop and choose the WinPE.ISO image and click on open. So now I have loaded the WinPE.ISO disk into my CD DVD ROM drive and I can click OK. It's just like putting a disk on the tray except the disk is not really there. Here comes the tricky part. With VMware Player I'm not going to go in and modify the BIOS to choose to boot from DVD first. I'm going to go ahead and turn my virtual machine on and the minute or the instance that screen becomes black, I'm going to click it with my mouse and then immediately follow it with the escape key. So let's see if I can do this. There we go. Got it. I clicked on the black screen immediately and then I've pressed the escape key following clicking. So I need to select CD-ROM drive and then I click enter and then I need to press any key to boot from DVD. So it looks like a normal boot up but what's happening is the VMware session is turning on using files from the DVD-ROM drive. In this case, it's the WinPE 
that ISO image. And we're going into a Windows PE, that's pre-installation environment. And from here we can use ImageX to capture our image. So we've got a black screen, which is good. Uh, we're going to have a command prompt any minute now. So there we have a command prompt. From here, I want to create a mapped network drive to my 2008 server. So my 2008 server is called RWDC01. So I want to create a map drive, um, which is drive letter Z. So I'll type in net use Z colon slash slash RWDC01 slash downloads, which is a share where I'd like my image to be kept. I'm then going to create the user that has the appropriate permissions to use the RWDC01 slash download share and that is forward slash user colon from the Contoso domain backslash administrator and then we'll hit enter. And now we need to input the password for Contoso administrator so I'll type that in. and I now have a Z drive and if you'd like you can change your command prompt to Z and run a directory and you'll see that there's files there so I'm gonna go back to X and now we need to run the image X capture utility and image X is not on the X drive image X is actually on my winpe.iso file which is the DVD drive, which is drive letter D. So if we click on D colon and hit enter, and then type DIR and hit enter, you'll see that image x.exe is there and present. So I'm going to type in image x.exe space forward slash capture, which is that's what I'd like to do is capture an image. And I want to capture C colon and I want it to be located at Z colon slash BK dash CL1 that's the name of my computer and it's going to be a dot WIM file Windows image file and let's type in quote BK dash CL1 as a description quote and then we'll type in slash verify to review what we've done here we're running the imagex.exe utility slash capture which will capture an image I'd like to capture an image of the C drive on this computer that's C colon and I want that image to be located on the Z drive Z colon slash BK dash CL one dot whim and the description will be bk-cl1 and then a slash verify means that it will verify all of the files after the copy is complete so we'll hit the enter key and we are now starting the image capturing process this is going to take a little time so I'll fast forward the capture process and come back to you when it's completed Great, our ImageX capture process is complete. I'm going to go ahead and close or turn off my virtual machine. I'm going to turn the power off. And then I want to go ahead and take a look at my 2008 server, which we mapped a drive to the download share, and then we saved our bk-cl1 WIM file right on the root of Z and here is the file that's four gigs in size or just under that so this concludes our presentation of how to capture an image using ImageX thanks for watching and I hope that you've enjoyed the presentation this is BrickHouseLabs.com